Hello once again, so it's the 1st of February 2019, which of course means it's time to talk about the solar statistics for my nine kilowatt solar array here in the UK for January 2019. So a couple of things uh, have changed this month, which we're going into a little bit of detail on. So as mentioned before, I recently moved to Octopus Energy for my electricity and gas provision. And this month they came and installed their version of a smart meter and that's enabled me to switch to the Octopus Go tariff. Now the Go tariff is doing a couple of things for me. It's actually got a lower standard um, kilowatt rate during the day than the tariff I was on before. It has got a st slightly higher standing charge though, but it's what is known as an economy four tariff. So what that means is during the uh, evening from half past 12, uh, well, I say it's in the morning really, half past midnight uh, to 4.30 in the morning, the electricity is only five pence per kilowatt. So what I've done in January, I've done a couple of things, I switched my um, eddy to kind of heat the water in the evening or in that, in that economy tariff uh, spot as well as enabling the, the peak and off peak settings on my power wall so the power wall is also then charging up fully uh, on the economy tariff using cheap electricity because there's not really that much solar right now in the winter. In February I'm looking to stop um, heating the water um, via the eddy and just switch to using my gas just so I can get some comparison because uh, as you'll see uh, my electricity consumption was quite high in um, January but I'm not quite sure how much of that was you know, in the cheap electricity because I can't really get any way of, of telling. So um, if you are interested uh, as I mentioned before in moving to uh, Octopus Energy I'll put a link in the description uh, if you use the link, uh, you get £50 credit to your account, and so do I. Um, and then you can get one of those uh, meters installed, hopefully for free, and move to the Go tariff, which is really great if you've got a battery or electric vehicle. So, um, moving on to kind of uh, the stats. So, uh, this is the first month, actually, where the system hasn't performed as well as either I would predicted or... Uh, the solar installer have predicted. So um, for the month of January, um, my installer estimated a generation of 270 kilowatt hours, and I estimated uh, a generation of 250 kilowatt hours. Based on previous history, we sometimes get like in the middle. So I was kind of expecting around 258, 262, something like that. Um, however, the reality was 214. 0.49 kilowatt hours. So better than December, but for the first time not in that peak point. Now, there's really only three kind of really good days of solar over January, and the last few of them have been in the last kind of couple of days, like on the 30th and the 31st, um, I think it was, or the, something like that. Um, so yeah, interesting that for the first time I'm kind of below both estimates. So, um, but the good news is comparing it to December, Hopefully we're over the, the worst of the, the weather now and the solar generation will continue to, to creep up to the higher level. And I'm really looking to see um, how well the system performs. Um, so just to clarify again, because I know a few people have asked in some of the previous videos, um, it's a nine kilowatt array with a six kilowatt inverter. So anything over six kilowatts I'm clipping, but in this weather, I think the maximum I saw, I did see like a, a 5.1 kilowatt burst for a short period of time, um, but I haven't got to worry about that in this kind of weather. So, yes, yeah, so going back, um, so the system generated 214.49 kilowatt hours. My self consumption of that was 210.92 kilowatt hours with an export at 3.57 kilowatt hours. I normally kind of mention a little bit about the, the minimal surplus that would have gone into the My Energy Eddy product, um, but this month I actually did upgrade the firmware in that device, which reset um, the stats and everything. So. Uh, I'm not uh, going to mention that now. And then um, I think with a combination of heating that water up and obviously filling up the power wall, 
um, and obviously the electric panel heater here in the cave on all the time there was a, a you know pretty much a 200 kilowatt increase uh, in January over December in terms of my electricity usage and um, so I imported 718.97 kilowatts of electricity so quite a lot um, but yes yeah, so that's kind of how things have performed this month so kind of Good. I mean, it's better than December, but like I said, disappointing in terms of uh, what the estimates were. As you can see here, uh, my consumption has been pretty regular uh, across the whole month. Just trying to remember exactly what date it was that I had the um, the economy tariff turned on. Just uh, trying to remember. Over here. Should be more prepared, Dale. Uh, okay, so my smart meter installed, installed on the tenth. So if we look here, um, yeah. So the energy usage actually wasn't that more since having uh, the economy tariff. Actually, so that's interesting. So even though I have used two hundred kilowatts, it kind of does kind of still fit in with kind of some of the earlier usage. I think that's because people are still at home and the kids were still off for the first kind of week or so of January. Uh, and then the weather's been pretty bad, so the heating's been on and, and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, so we can see in general, the consumption has kind of risen kind of past the halfway mark. Um, so yeah, kind of interesting. And you can see here, a couple of good days-ish on the 8th and the 9th. Uh, 17th was a pretty good solar day. And then the 27th, the 28th, sorry, and the 30th were re really good solar days. So I remember on the 30th, I think the, by the time the sun was up, I had about 50% left in the power wall. That got fully charged, also fully heated the uh, water with the eddy, and then uh, charged up the Twizy. It was, a, it was a great day. So again, if we just do what we normally do, just have a quick scan through uh, so we can get a rough idea of kind of consumption versus uh, generation. So you can see here, really minimal um, solar at the beginning of the month. Couple of bursts in the second. Keep spinning through to see some of those good days. Oh, it wasn't too bad. And I guess like um, uh, yourselves over over the Christmas and New Year, you've probably got people coming around and you're cooking a lot. But you can see here, this was a good day. So the eighth, um, it's a pretty good generation. So a maximum of three point six kilowatt hours for a sustained period of time there. Um, and again, just a couple of peaks and troughs. Um, but the main thing um, that we can see, so obviously this was the 10th. So this would be, yeah, so you can see where there's a little glitch uh, on the 10th. This is when all my power's off to have the energy meter uh, changed, uh, the smart meter changed, I should say. And so then hopefully from the next day, we should see this little spike um, overnight. Perhaps I didn't get it configured. Oh, that was it. So you have, yeah, you had the smart meter installed. Then you have to wait for some things to happen before you move to the go tariff. That, that I remember now. So I wasn't on the go tariff straight away. So we should see this when the go tariff started working. Ah, here we are. So you can see here on the 15th, um, now I'm on the go tariff. So in the evening or in the early hours of the morning, I should say, I'm pulling uh, from the grid at that cheap electricity rate. So you can see here um, by half past four, power is kind of fully charged. Um, and then electricity usage is kind of mainly coming from the power. So there'll be a couple of things here where perhaps the kettle was being boiled and the hairdryer was on and the toaster was on. So it kind of had to pull something uh, from the grid. And then because the weather's so bad and obviously got this two kilowatt heater on all the time, then really by about four o'clock, the power wall is depleted uh, and then I'm pulling from the grid again. But still it just means that throughout the whole day, pretty much when I've got this two kilowatt panel heater on all the time, I'm, I'm getting that five pence per kilowatt hour. So it helps overall. And then you just see a similar graphing um, through the rest. And that was obviously quite a good day there. We had a peak of 4.6 kilowatts on the 17th. Okay, not too bad there. 
Uh, 20th was obviously really good, so pretty much the power will sustain us all the way through the day. That must have been the weekend because we don't use as much electricity the weekend because the heat is not on here in the cave. Uh, another good day, so that's probably one of the best, uh, yeah, 5.188 kilowatt hours maximum generation on that day. Um, getting through here. But it's really interesting how you can see from the graphs just kind of how things, it's very easy to interpret kind of what's happening in your house. So, uh, happy about that. And then that's it. That brings us up to the end of the month. So, yeah, still happy with how uh, things are performing. Uh, I know a few people have said that these videos are really helping them kind of understand kind of how, perhaps how their systems will be performing. Um, I'm excited to see what happens in February. So no, a okay, real change of uh, plan for me will be switching back uh, from not using um, the economy tariff to heat the water uh, and seeing how much the heating is still on and then heating the water at the same time as the radiators. Like I, I tried that a little bit before in December, so I want to see if it's the power wall or the um, the, the water heating that's accounting for the, the surge in usage. Uh, and then the other thing uh, I should mention is in terms of the power wall and, and its efficiency, which I mentioned a little bit before. So for um, the month of January, 258 kilowatt hours was put into uh, the power wall and I was able to take out of it 228 kilowatt hours. So majority of that was um, through off-peak um, usage, um, but obviously some of it did come from the sun, and that equates to about an 88% efficiency rate, I think. So still a little bit under um, the 90% that is kind of expected from it. I'm still putting that down to kind of incomplete cycles. So obviously I didn't start doing the charge until kind of midway through January. So it's an improvement over kind of last year's stats. And uh, so it'd be interesting if we look at kind of February, assuming the weather continues to be how it is and we're getting the charging cycle on the economy tariff, what the efficiency rate is at um, the end of February. But still really happy with how the battery is performing. And I don't think there's really um, other stats I can just check what we've got here. So that'll probably be for January. Yeah, so can't get hold of the February stats. So. Still not super happy with how this um, uh, Power app does its historical stuff, but as I said, showed in the other video, you can get a little bit access to some more information, which is helpful. So that's it. Um, hope the videos continue to be helpful. Let me know how your solar system is um, performing. And uh, yeah, I'll also let you know, it should be end of this month, I think, that I get my first feed-in tariff check. Um, but I'll mention that in a, another video I'm doing just to uh, follow up on the feed-in tariffs that a few people have asked for. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek-type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.